It was when I received Courtney's photocopies of the cheques and he also reported that Marsden was making a lot of stuff in the factory and selling it for himself uh, and never bothered with uh, ordering stocks that uh, were required, such as rubberware and so forth. I realised for the first time that all Marsden had done was stolen the company. He'd helped himself to absolutely everything. And uh, it was then that uh, uh, I decided to go back to Stakehold. So my first call, we had Stephen with me at the time uh, here in the UK, and Stephen said, well, I'll go with you. So we booked the two tickets for myself and for Stephen, and we went to Johannesburg first. And then from Johannesburg, I took a, uh, a flight up to Harare, but I also had made arrangements with Byron Venturis uh, to meet me at the airport in case I encountered any problems at all, uh, which in fact was the case. And then a chap by the name of John, I can't think of his other name, uh, actually uh, picked me up and took me to his home at the time. Uh, but Byron was very good. Uh, and then from there on, uh, he advised me what to do. Uh, my first trip into Stakehold, I think everyone was shocked. Uh, to, to find out. Even one of the customers said, well, we don't want you. You can go back where you came from. That, to me, was a shock as well, and to see exactly what was happening. A lot of the stories started to uh, uh, be revealed to me by different members of the staff as to exactly who took what and, and so on. And, and the same applied to the homestead. Uh, where, uh, you know, Isaac gave a full report as to what had actually transpired. And uh, it was from there now, um, after settling and sorting the different problems that I experienced out, sorting out also with the lawyers and, uh, and so on, um, that I said to Tony, look, it's quite safe for you. You can come back now, uh, which is actually what took place. So Tony then took a ticket and came back uh, to Harare, leaving Wynne at college. When I was auditing Marsden's takings, it did take me about seven or eight months to do it because it was a full audit, but at the same time there were invoices and stuff missing. So it took a while. But anyway, I decided uh, to see if there was any um, criminal record up at the High Court uh, for Marsden and uh, so I got Courtney the driver to drive me up to the High Court. I went into the offices and asked that I wanted to view Marsden's criminal records and the chap said oh yes okay and he took the details down and so on and then I followed that up about six seven times and he kept saying, oh, we're still getting it, we're still getting it. And so I, I thought, you know what, <laughs> I'll go to Cod Court and uh, buy some clothing, which is what I did. So I packed it in, got Courtney to take me up again to the High Court. And I had a bag now with the clothes and I went to the offices and um, I waited for the, the second fella to go out. So. Anyway, the one fellow was there and I said to him, I said, you know, you're helping me and I now want to help you. And giving him the clothes, a bag of clothes, oh. And very, very quickly it went under the desk. And then he said so, that he would do his best to get them for me. And uh, so anyway, I went back to the office and I hadn't been in the office more than an hour when he phoned and he said, I have the records for you. So I went up immediately and I took pen and paper with me so that I could write details down. And as I was proceeding to do that, he said, don't you want to photostat them? Oh, oh, I said, love to. So we counted the pages and there were 32. So out I went, I photostatted six copies of every page. And then with immediate effect, I went back and gave the High Court chap the papers back. 
But from then on, I had six copies of his full record. And so I filed each one in separate files. And then I also took a copy now to my lawyer, Byron Venturis, and he looked at it and he said, oh, where did you get that from? I said, from the High Court. So <laughs> I think he had a big smile on his face. But uh, the records state that he w had in fact uh, done exactly the same as he did to us. He stole another person's money, not quite the volume, and they actually uh, locked him up for two years for doing exactly the same thing that he did, in fact, with me. And I have his prison number and cell number, and so now it came now, Master now wants a big meeting with the lawyers, okay. <laughs> so I get all my papers that I had, the files with everything in, all the evidence, and there were 12 all together, put them in a big box, and up to the uh, to Byron's office with all the uh, files, awaiting now for Marsden to strut in. Oh, big stuff, you know, with his lawyer. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the meeting started, and uh, they were on now about our accusation, so to speak, with Marsden. All the terrible things, and this wasn't the case. So I very quietly took out his full criminal record handed it to his lawyer. So his lawyer looked at it and said, is this real? I said, yes. Well, from that moment, Marston never had a lawyer. So, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so that was sorted. But everything was in the hands of Byram from then on. But uh, for me, that was really pleasure to see, <laughs> especially when he thought that uh, he was going to fix me, you know. <laughs> And I had all the files. I took the, some of the files out that uh, Marston's lawyer wanted and produced the evidence and uh, coupled with the criminal record that I had in full. Um, that was it. I mean, we came, I came out smiling. <laughs> when we got back to Byron Venturis's offices, um, not straight away, but about a week later, um, we went back to uh, the lawyer to sort of catch up now as to what our next moves were, because now I had proper evidence and I had Marston completely sealed, you know, with the criminal record that he had, uh, certainly gave me all the backing I needed. Byram said to me, we have a major problem. He said, if we take this now through to the courts, he said that the judges in the courts were all ZANU-PF and run by government. He said, the moment you put this case forward, he said, I can tell you now, he said, they'll clean you up completely. They will just take everything from you. He said, you won't get anywhere. He said, the, the only way that he can see things was to tackle it on a private basis. And so it was, uh, he then made up proper agreements and uh, for Marsden to sign, to start paying us back so much a month. And, uh, and that, but, uh, you know, we, we never ever really got the money back. I think that uh, Marsden took uh, advantage of the CIO uh, situation and had an elaborate plan uh, to help himself and steal all the monies that he, he took from our accounts and uh, at the end of the day, it was over a million Zimbabwe dollars that we lost. And we couldn't get anything back. <laughs>